This video is brought to you by WeatherTech. Now I'm a big fan of car, truck, and SUV camping, but I hate the feeling of sleeping in a fishbowl. But well, WeatherTech has a really cool product to help with that. Check this out. This is the sunshade, but not just for your windshield, for all the windows. They are shiny on one side to help deflect the rays of the sun in the summer to keep your car cool. And then on the other side, they're dark black, which helps absorb some of that heat from the sun and melt the frost in the winter. Check out the link in the description below for all your car, truck, and SUV needs. This episode is the first road trip in our new long-term truck, the 2020 Ram Heavy Duty Cummins Diesel. But it's not just any road trip. I'm doing a little bit of work. And here's what I'm trying to see. Can I go about 380 miles on one tank of diesel over the mountains, 190 miles without a trailer, pick up a brand new Aluma trailer, and then 190 miles home. fuel efficiency is a big deal now because prices are going up. Here's what it is here in Boulder. 4.55 a gallon for diesel and this 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel in this 2500 Ram. I'm hoping it's relatively efficient even over the mountain passes. All right that's topped off. Let's get in the cab and I'll tell you a little bit more about the trip. Before I get going, I'm gonna reset the trip meter. Right here, trip A, zeroed out. The truck has about a thousand miles on the odometer already. It's technically broken in, although, based on the owner's manual on the Ram Cummins engine, no break-in is required for heavier work or towing trailers. And I'm not towing heavy today, but this is kind of a range test. So 390 miles should be doable, but that doesn't account climbing mountains and also, uh, of course, towing the trailer all the way home. All right, so I just got on I-70 interstate going west. And basically my trip is from Boulder, Colorado to Rifle, Colorado. Like I said, about 190 miles each way. And I do have to cross the Continental Divide, the Ike Gauntlet, several mountain passes, including Vail. And the beautiful part about this truck is really its powertrain, the diesel engine, the Cummins. Factory rating 370 horsepower, 850 pound-feet of torque. It has a six-speed automatic transmission that's been in this truck with this powertrain for many years. It's the 68 RFE, it's called and it's not super ultra heavy duty transmission but for what it does it should be relatively efficient and i'm not doing heavy work today so it should be just good here's a quick trip update i have it here on my apple carplay by the way wireless carplay is available now in the ram 2500 uh, with this uconnect 5 system uh, but unfortunately just added about 25 to 30 minutes to my drive due to traffic All right, so which way should I go? There is traffic here. There is traffic there Google tells me to take this side road I'm gonna take it just just because Google says so Here I am, running empty down the Ike Gauntlet. I just went through the tunnel, and um, so far this truck is just a pleasure. It's nice and quiet, relatively comfortable suspension, although it is not loaded, so once in a while you can kind of feel some of the bumps. Uh, I cannot wait to get it loaded a little bit heavier, but it's nice and quiet, comfortable. So far it's been just right. And when we go up with the trailer on the way back, I'll also give you kind of a cabin sound check so you can tell exactly what it's like. Well, here's the result on my unladen trip to Rifle, Colorado. I'm basically done pulling up to their location. 
195.5 miles and 20.7 mpg i am pleasantly surprised i thought close to 20 would be possible but i didn't think it would be as high as that but now let's go check out the trailer let's go see exactly what it is maybe put something on top of it just to test fit it and then i have to drive another 195 miles so and at the very end of course i'll give you the fuel pump fuel efficiency One of the features that's kind of nice on the Aluma trailers, it's already hooked to your truck, but we use a Demco coupler on here. Okay. This is a Demco Easy Latch coupler. The nice thing about it is this stays latched down when you're taking and it's setting it on your truck. So it's considered a posi latch system. So you're gonna see it rise up and come down and latch onto there. Once that's latched on, it stays on there. Breakaway system, because this is a 5,200 pound axle trailer with brakes. So you wanna have your safety chains and your cable hooked up. This is our executive model. So it comes standard with this 42 inch air dam and the toolbox standard on there. Obviously good for straps, storage, but it also has a light on there. So at night, when you're actually I using it, yes. you can Which light I it up. Do. Another thing about that is when you're loading in that there, there's load lights on the deck. Everything we do on this trailer is aluminum construction. Obviously, we're not your common shapes and sizes. Aluma, we're different. We're all extrusion built. So all this is a custom extrusion that's done specifically for our trailer. We're not just, you know, a rectangle tube or a square tube. We're actually extrusions on everything, including the deck planks, including those runners, including the tube for the hitch. Everything is extrusion built. That's what makes us different. We do everything all the way from a little four by six all the way up to, we do a 10 by 30 in a deck over style. So we do multiple styles and uh, lengths. What's the payload on this particular, approximately? Approximately 8,000 pounds uh, net capacity on yes. this. Uh, so the trailer itself weighs, what, just over 2,000 pounds now? Yeah, 2,050 pounds yeah. on a 24 foot. That's, if That's you, if you equate it. aluminum, right? Absolutely, yeah. lightweight, but it still has a strength. Trailer here has torsion axles, rubber torsion axles, and we have removable fenders. If you want, we can pull this off here yeah, real quick. You just unscrew the, the front T-handle here, and there's just a washer and a lock nut on there. Lock nut's important on there. And then it just lifts straight up. So this is designed if you're loading something that maybe has a little extra width to it, you're still 80 inches in between there, but if you wanted to load something a little bit wider, you have the width in here. So you can run something with maybe a Jeep with extra wide tires or rock crawler. You can still run it on here, put the fenders back on, secure it down, still have it to haul. These are a stainless 8,000 pound rated capacity, swivel D-ring. So you can have it for tying down and it'll just move with what you need to on there. The other thing that's kind of nice about this is we have the load jacks on here. They're spring loaded and there's a pin here. If you need to, you can pop that pin and go down. We always recommend when you're loading something to use these because it'll push down on the trailer and obviously with flex, it'll come back. But having it not all the way to the ground, just about this far off the ground when you're loading, it'll give it enough to flex down, but come back up. Otherwise, you'll get a load on there. It'll sit down tight to the ground. And you can't get the jack up without driving forward and ripping them off. Warranty on our, all the Aluma products is a five year tip to tail warranty. We're known for one of the best warranties in the industry. I say it's kind of a joke because we really don't have any warranty issues. So we're the best, but we have the longest. We just don't have any issues with it. Nate, actually, you were instrumental in making this happen. Yes. Uh, getting the trailer and hooking us up with Aluma. So yeah. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Absolutely. This is your place, right? This is it. This is a rifle truck and trailer. Awesome. So we're going to do a demo. Here. Okay. We're going to load your brand new F-150 trimmer okay. onto the trailer. Is that okay? Let's do it. So this truck weighs 5,300 pounds. Um, I've got it uh, majority of the weight right over the axles. Um, we don't want to go too far forward because then we're going to be adding too much tongue weight. Yeah. Um, so I've got the majority of the weight right over the axles here. 
This thing should just tow like a dream. You want to make sure that you're, um, you've got proper tow straps that are rated for the weight of what you're hauling. So in this case, yeah, I would want four points of contact on the vehicle to the trailer to assure that nothing's going to shift on or move on you. So I've got these tow points here. I've got two uh, in, in the rear here, and I also have uh, two in the front. Uh, so there's a few different ways you can, uh, you can tie these vehicles down. Um, obvious points are going to be right here in the rear. Um, a lot of guys like to use the tires to tie the tires down. That way allows the suspension to travel. Well, what do you think? Do you like the trailer? I love it. Yes, it's very premium, very lightweight. I cannot wait to actually tow it back home and see how it feels on the highway. It is super nice. It also has a price tag of about $18,000 for this executive model you see behind me with all the optional equipment. This Ram Heavy Duty truck, of course, has many features for towing. Tow haul mode, I'll be using that. Exhaust brake, I don't think that's necessary to be towing about, what, a 2,000 or 2,100 pound trailer, so I won't be using that. I will be using my brake controller, though. I'm gonna set it to about three, maybe three and a half, and I can test it using this. Uh, the brakes are brand new. Both axles are braked because Colorado requires it, And but I don't wanna lock them up because it's lightweight, so I wanna have a good balance. Now it's time just to get on the road and then I can get you the final fuel economy number after we get there. But first, there's also the Ike Gauntlet and lots more highway. So let's roll the music and let's do a little bit more road tripping. Well guys, it's about that time. I promised you this. I'm gonna run the Ike Gauntlet. <laughs> Okay, it's not the real eye gauntlet because I'm not carrying heavy loads, but still the trailer is behind me. I'm on this highway, I'm just passing Dylan, and I can also give you a little bit of a sound check on this massive Cummins engine and how loud or quiet it is. So let me set my cruise control system at 60 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, and I'll give you a little update. 64.9 decibels. Right now I'm talking to you at about 82-ish, 83, 84. Uh, so anything below 70 decibels is quiet and this diesel engine is so controlled and the truck is barely working actually. All right, let's, um, let me melt my credit card, actually TFL's credit card, and see how much fuel we've used for real. Okay, I think that was just right. Topped off, take a look. 22.101, let's calculate. So I went 395 miles and I used 22.101 gallons. The result is 17.9, if I round up. So the truck was saying about 18.9, so the truck was optimistic. The real result is actually a little bit worse, but still hauling the trailer all the way back, although empty, uh, pretty good. I am pleasantly surprised, and we were able to do it on one tank. So there you have it. Stay tuned to TFL Truck because we'll be doing much more with this trailer as the wind picks up. And uh, go back to tfl-studios.com for everything automotive, including cars, off-road, motorcycles, and much more. Thanks for joining me on this trip. The comments did good. Pretty impressive.